that wasn't clickbait. Last night, we actually picked a cucumber and ate it while in the shower. I just kind of rigged that together for now because my upstairs bathroom, I'm recocking the shower and it's late summer, which means it's uh, a good time to dry it out because it's, you, you know, in order to recock it, you have to dry everything out. Here, I'll give you the virtual experience. Not bad, right? I mean, I have to say this is just, it, it's, it's exquisite, it's great. It's the best way that you can possibly shower. If you ever get the chance to do it, do it. Build one. In my experience, the thing that cucumbers love the most is clean soil, good soil. Quality soil produces. They are extremely heat and light tolerant from what I, in, in my experience, Oh, by the way, this is from hail. We had a hailstorm that just wrecked them, so they would be doing a lot better if it weren't for that. Uh, it was kind of an unusual hailstorm. Caused a lot of damage. This garden bed has done really well for its small size. We didn't have to fence it off. It's too close to the house, so deer don't eat it. Kale, beans, red fire lettuce. I don't know what stuff is some cabbage and stuff but um, not but not as much light down low but this was early season stuff and then the cucumbers fill out the remainder of the season by hogging up all the light high if you've never um, done them in a climbing trellis like this it's the best way really uh, cucumbers do much better when they can get air and light and it's just a bunch of green sticks all tied together with jute string. The video I've just posted was... While I started to film this, I realized that I never posted another video, which was about a hatchet handle or something. And there were scenes about this in its infancy, so I figured I'd show you how this turned out as well. But as I was saying, the shower is, was supposed to be just, I have to turn off this humidifier, hold on. The camera makes that look pretty bad. I'll have to address it. Uh, if you have any suggestions for a surface, since this is going to be high moisture, let me know. Uh, I've been thinking of a couple different things, but I'd like to hear what your opinion is of what would be the ultimate surface for here. Mind you that we're going to use this shower a lot <laughs> because it's really convenient and pleasant. I put this stoop in. Uh, I replaced, well, the threshold was all rotten, so I just tore it out entirely and replaced it with concrete to make it a little more shower friendly. Now, I redid the wood, but that's only a temporary solution. I think I'm going to cover this with trim coil. I think metal would do better. Maybe I'll cut this out just a little bit to get some silicone under there to act as a barrier. This here is kind of like an expansion. There's I put foam in there, styrofoam, because you don't want concrete on concrete expansion contraction, freeze thaw, you know, it'll crack. But yeah, white and brown trim coil, and that'll be nice. It'll last a good while. So what did I do for the plumbing? <laughs> the, okay, so later I'm going to put, into, put in a valve. But for now, it's just black iron pipe with a fitting that connects to um, laundry hose. And then I had to put in a towel rack. That's all. Uh, I, this is not permanent though. This is just for now, as I've said, we had to do something in order to be able to bathe while I finished the upstairs bathroom. And the first floor bathroom, there's a clawfoot tub and it has a leaky spigot, so I have to fix that as well. Oh, non-stop, right? 
So this little garden was made from slab wood cut off. You can barely see it now because I imported a bunch of, well, ex excuse me for not weed whacking. Um, I brought in a bunch of topsoil and graded this out a little bit to raise it up. So it was considerably different when you saw it last. Now the bridge is back here. I'll fast forward. Uh, we have some goldfish now. They grow quite quick, quickly actually, I'm surprised. So, uh, the splits, I just lagged it to another piece of slab wood. The splits are largely superficial. That doesn't affect its strength at all. And we kept losing fish in the heavy rains because this collects um, runoff. So what I did was built a little dam and then raised the water table up a bit with this um, this round round rock doesn't have edges, so it allows water to pass through easier than like 2B or something. So it acts like a filter and it really reduced the amount of fish that we lose. Uh, it's There's kind of a selection process going on here and the smart ones remain. That's an interesting idea actually, selecting fish for intelligence. Long after we're all gone, this could be the seed of the next generation of Earth's intelligence. Of course, we're probably a long way off, considering they can barely figure out how to find the food at this point. The thing that makes it all possible is the drain. It's one of the first things I noticed when I moved here. There's already plumbing. So, in effect, the hard part was already done. It was kind of a no-brainer to build the shower itself after that. Valves. Uh, there are quite a few considerations, but let me show you some of the ideas that I have. Oh, the wall. That's different, right? Uh, and this, I guess I should capture this on video as well. Old doors. Uh, I'm stripping them and redoing them. There are peach trees. Solid glass, solid steel, but I'm adding a bottom part to it and a rubber sweep you know, just restore in general. They have those stupid um, low distance back sets, which are annoying because you scrape your knuckles, but hey, what do you want for free? I filled in the upper deadbolt because I believe these were French doors. There are two of them. They're counterparts. I fr filled in the deadbolt with um, auto body putty on the other side and then filled this in and sanded it. And here I'll show you how it turned out. I still have lots of wiring issues to work out. These switches should be over there, but I'm not done yet. Obviously. Ah, you'll see them when they're all done. They should be nice and pretty. Also got that all back together, Had the, got the carburetor completely done, redid the whole thing, built the, made this work for it. I should probably do a whole video just on this thing, but after all that work, everything that I did, now it started leaking oil. Well, say la vie, as the Russians say. Um, there's my greenhouse, and here's the state of my mess. Always working at it, always picking on it. Oh, valves. 
moving back and forth inside outside. I have to constantly change the settings on the camera, so I apologize if the color is not corrected. Eventually I'll have um, LED lighting that's, that saves me the problem. So what I want here, this thing is, this is pretty cool. It's an on-off ball valve that operates both valves at the same time, and this is for a uh, washing machine. I'm thinking that I want to use this and then have a, you know, just a regular spigot, a twist no uh, valve for hot and cold, and then just throw the gate to turn the shower on. That way, from the inside, right by, if you remember on the inside, right where the hose attaches to the black iron, that's where the valve should be. So you would open the door and from the outside you would open the door, reach around and throw the, the switch. You would set your temperature with the valves in advance and then just throw this lever to turn it on or off. That way you reduce the amount of in and out. And I don't want to put a valve outside because it's just not an everyday shower. My father-in-law gave me this high-end valve, but I don't like all the pressure-reducing stuff. And also, in order to adjust the temperature, you have to take this part off, and then this little red thing, you have to spin around to dial in your temperature, and then this would just be for your on-off. I don't like these new... I like old-fashioned valves, just a, val a ball valve or a crank valve like a spigot. I don't like these new things. I know they're for safety, but you, you have to you have to consider how many axes of control there are when you're using a valve. When you have two valves, it allows you to control for the balance between hot and cold, and at the same time, the overall pressure of the system. These attempts at doing it all with one thing, like you grab the rod and... No. You just can't do it. You, there is a loss of control to those systems. And I just like old-fashioned, simple. And I'm not really worried about burning myself. But I would like to hear some ideas. I think simple, think steampunk, think efficiency and uh, ability to swap out parts and repair. I, I don't, I, this is too complicated, I want something simpler. And right now I'm leaning towards these would have to, the problem with that is that that's hose thread. You know, like for this, I need these to go into one so it would be a union and then that goes to the shower head. And the, these two would have the hot and the cold uh, knobs on them. It, but it's difficult to, to lay this out such that it mounts to the wall. So, lots of thinking, and like I said, I'd like to hear your ideas. Hmm. No, no, I don't think so. It's hard to think if you're not, it's hard to think in a trade that you're not accustomed to. I am admittedly slow-witted when it comes to plumbing and electrical problems, because you develop, your brain develops in a way that's, in, the way, in a way that it's accustomed to learning, and it, it reinforces itself, and, and you, you develop, you become better at what you know, and it makes you, in the process, the opportunity cost is you become worse at the things you don't know. It's hard to be, it's hard to be general, all-purpose, well-balanced, one tool fits all, but I'm trying. It's funny, actually, and kind of ironic as I look around at my mess and my preoccupation with just this multitude of projects. I, I, I was born, I was supposed to be a math professor. I don't know what the hell I'm doing here. Pottery and mechanical stuff and electrical stuff. And I, I, But you have to do what life requires of you. Adapt. So put the things that, you, the, those inclinations that you were born to be 
put those aside and do what life requires of you. That's what it's all about. Adapt to changing circumstances and enjoy it. Closing thought. Sometimes it makes us better to be outside of our domain. Okay, so this was a professional, presumably a professional plumber that put hot on this side and cold on this side and then the wires cross as they go to the faucet. Well, I'm no plumber. But us carpenters have the common sense not to flip that around. I used to work for a guy and he would say, what makes us different makes us better. I'm not really sure where I was going with that. I'll see you next time. I'll leave it to your imagination whether or not I have clothes on. <laughs> oh, one final tip. It's called Zoat soap. It's just laundry soap and it comes in a big bar. It kind of smells like citronella. It's good stuff. I put it on the bandsaw and cut it into like, I don't know, five bars and it's really cheap. Try it out.